Hello, class. How many enjoyed the last lesson that we did? Yay, me too. All right, before we start today's lesson, we're going to stand and have a word of prayer. We're going to ask Jackson to pray. We could all stand together and bow our heads. And Jackson, will you pray, please? Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that you gave us. Thank you for all the things that you helped us with. And thank you for the mystery. Mission missionaries that are out there, and we love you, Lord. Please bless Brother Joseph so he can have a great day, and bless all of the all of the people that we love, and the bride. And just now, pray, Amen. Thank you. All right, let's have a seat. Now, today we have an exciting lesson for you. Creations did a lesson on Corel Peaks, which is in Colorado. And do you remember what took place there? Brother Branham walking with Jesus, walking past the quaking asp, and he spoke that storm out of existence. A very special place. How wonderful it is to walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our guide through this life. He gives us such words of encouragement when we listen to the tapes, we need to be listening to those tapes so we know what our guide says, don't we? Yeah. Brother Branham had many special experiences out in the mountains where he could get alone with God in nature. How many of you have been to the mountains? Yeah, it's a wonderful place to get alone with God. Today we're going to talk about some other interesting, neat experiences that Brother Branham had while in Colorado. We're going to talk about the geography, guiding, ranching, and God in nature. Let's learn where Colorado is on the map. Colorado is considered part of the western United States. It is a mountainous state with over 15 separate ranges and has 58 peaks that rise more than 14,000 feet above sea level. They're known as the 14ers. The most well-known is the Rocky Mountain Range. These mountains are outstandingly majestic and beautiful with their snow-capped peaks. Now, if any of you have been privileged to have visited Colorado, you may know that it has diverse geography. From desert sand dunes to those high mountain peaks and deep rugged canyons, The Continental Divide, or the Great Divide, is located along the crest of the Rockies. It extends from Alaska to the Andes. Some of the places Brother Brandon mentions in Colorado are Corel Peaks, Troublesome River Valley, Rabbit Ear Pass, Berthid Pass area, and the Arapaho Forest. The next point we're going to talk about is guiding. Did you know that Brother Branham was a licensed guide in Colorado? Colorado was one of his favorite hunting grounds. Now we remember from our previous lesson that a guide is someone that helps show you around. He knows what to hunt, what animal to find, and where to find it. And if different circumstances come up, like a bad storm or it's really cold outside, he knows how to keep everybody safe. So Brother Branham knew what to do if he got caught out in bad weather. What kind of weather do you think you would find in the mountains? Jonah. Sunshine. Sunshine. 
Thunder. Snowstorms. Sunny. Rain. Yeah, rain. Yes, you can find all those things in the mountains. That time of the year around October in Colorado, it'll rain a while, then it'll freeze, and then it'll snow, and then it'll rain, the sun will shine. And it come up such a storm of twisting and blowing, and I got behind a tree and stood back there. And as the storm has passed, I come out, listen, and away back down through the valley, I heard the old bull elk begin to bugle. All right, so you heard that the weather can change. It can change from rain to snow to sun in an instant like that. The mountains provide the perfect atmosphere for snowstorms. Now, how many of you have ever seen a snowstorm? Have you seen a snowstorm? <gasps> Jonah has not seen a snowstorm. Have you guys seen snowstorm? All right, well, you know, I'm sure some of you in Australia may have never seen snow in real life. And all you in Canada are laughing really hard right now. Some snowfalls can be absolutely beautiful with nice falling snow covering the snow branches and they're absolutely beautiful. But do you think that was the kind of storm that Brother Brandon was warned about when he was out camping with the brothers in Colorado, out hunting with them, that storm that he spoke out of existence? No, you're right, that was a blizzard. So let's talk about what it takes to make a blizzard. One, sustained wind speeds of at least 35 miles per hour. Two, visibility restrictions because of blowing snow and drifting snow a quarter mile or less. And number three, it needs to last at least three hours. So we see that the conditions were perfect for that while Brother Brandon was out hunting. In fact, at one point he said, that he couldn't see further than five feet in front of him. And I brought a tape measure, and I'm going to find five feet on here. All right, five foot right there. Could you imagine not being able to see anything except for white behind these girls here? White out conditions? That's really hard to see, isn't it? All right, and to think, Brother Branham just spoke the word, and that storm dissipated. Speak the word. Just like when Jesus calmed the storm. And I want all of us to get our Bibles. And we are going to open and read Matthew 10, 20 together. If you want to stand with me. All right, everyone has it. Read along with me. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. All right, isn't that wonderful, speaking the word? All right, let's have a seat. So guides take people on guided hunting trips. Remember, he knows where to find the animals, how to find them. Now the Colorado mountains has different growth zones as the elevation changes. The alpine zone starts above 11,500 feet above the sea level. It's above the tree line. Up here lives the bighorn sheep. Males are called rams, and they have massive brown horns that curl back past their ears and down past their cheeks. They have split hooves and an amazing sense of balance, which makes them excellent rock climbers. During the short summer, Wild grass and flowers grow, causing lower altitude animals to visit, such as the elk and the eagle. The brown eagle is one of North America's largest birds of prey. They are also called golden eagles. The adults are brown. They can grow to a length of three feet with a wingspan of six to seven feet. They are able to take down a deer. Their feathers are tight, so the eaglets can hang on without fear of falling off. They can fly higher than any other kind of bird. The subalpine elevation is from 10,000 to 11,500 feet above sea level. Here lives the hemlocks, fir, and spruce. The higher you go, the trees get shorter and shorter. This is elk territory. The elk is one of North America's biggest game animals. 
The males can grow up to 1,000 pounds and they live in herds. They have strong hooves and can quickly climb steep mountains. Wasn't that neat hearing the bull elk bugle? Brother Branham saw God in the elk bugling for his mate. It was like David in the scripture who said, when the deep calleth to the deep. Next is the montane zone. It is from 8,000 to 10,000 feet above sea level. Quaking asp, or quicken asp, as Brother Branham calls them, forests are in this zone. Quaken asp are beautiful trees with white bark and their leaves shake easy in the wind. Their fall colors range from oranges, reds, to yellows. In this zone lives mule deer and black bear. Black bear have small beady eyes and rounded ears. They can grow up to seven feet long and three feet tall at the shoulders. Black bear hibernate. That means they sleep for months and months over the cold winter. The foothills are from 6,000 to 8,000 feet. This zone is full of canyons, plateaus, steep hillsides, mesas, valleys, and rivers. This is the zone where trout live. Now a guide doesn't know just where game animals are, but also fish. Brother Branham liked to fish in the troublesome river valley. There are six varieties of trout in Colorado and they grow up to 10 pounds. The plains are from 4,000 to 6,000 feet above sea level. Here is where the white-tailed deer live. Brother Branham likened the white-tailed deer to Houdini. They are escape artists. He said it'd take a shrew hunter to get his deer. White-tailed deer, when startled, raise its tail to expose the white underside. It is the smallest of North America's deer varieties. We know that Brother Branham was an avid hunter. Some time ago, I was up in Colorado. It was early in the fall and we were hunting. Oh, how I love to get into those mountains. My, after all those hard meetings, I go way back and get on a horse about 35 miles from civilization, way back across the Rocky Peaks by myself. Just take a couple of pack horses and take off. Get back there, not so much to hunt the animals, but to be alone with God, right out among his nature. That's where I see him. So why do you think Brother Branham enjoyed going out hunting after hearing that quote? Benjamin. To get alone with God, that's right. He liked to get alone in nature and get alone with God. There are so many wonderful hunting stories in the message. We're gonna go on to our next point, ranching. We know that when Brother Branham was younger, he used to go out and help with ranching in Colorado. And when he's older, he would go back and he would help with a rancher named Jim. He would go back 70 miles on horseback to that ranch, it's way out in the wilderness, isn't it? Who knows what a ranch is? It is, it's a big farm, or it could, it could be a small one too. It's a piece of farmland where they raise livestock. Now, when Brother Brandon was a rancher, helping ranch out in Colorado, what kind of livestock did he help take care of? Benjamin. Huh? Cattle. cattle, that's right. Anybody know what kind of cattle? It's a special kind of cattle. Yes. Herefords, that's right. He took care of thoroughbred Herefords. Now, who knows what a thoroughbred is? Do any of you have maybe a thoroughbred horse or a thoroughbred dog? You know what the word thoroughbred means? It means pure-blooded. It's a pure breed. So that's what kind of Hereford it was. Hereford cattle are primarily raised for eating. That's where you get your hamburgers and steaks from. They are generally reddish brown in color with a white face, and they are known to be gentle. Brother Branham helped herd them along the troublesome river valley, and they would graze out on the Arapaho forest. When it was time for the roundup, Brother Branham would stay in a cow camp. 
That's where the cowboys would stay and ride and keep the cattle separated. Now I remember over in Colorado, the Hereford Association grazes the Troublesome River Valley. And many times when we take the cattle up there, if I sat with my leg wrapped around the horn of the saddle while the ranger was checking these cattle going through the gate, the drift fence gate. And there was the turkey track, there was the lazy cave, the diamond tea, Mr. Grimes, and the um, tripod, which was Mr. Jeffries, who I was with, Mr. Zwallen, they, different ones going through which Every man could raise a ton of hay, could put a cow on the pasture for the summer. But I noticed that ranger never even checked the brands. He looked in their ear for the blood tag because nothing could go on that forest except it was a registered Hereford. And that's the way it's going to be at the big gate someday. God don't care what brand you're wearing, he's going to look for the blood tag of his own son, for it's the blood of Jesus Christ. He won't watch the brand, he'll watch the blood. Not when I see the brand, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. So now we hear from the quote that Brother Brandon was sitting on his horse near the fence and he had his leg wrapped around the horn of that saddle and he was noticing the cattle go by. And what was he noticing on the cattle as they went by? Charity. Different brands. That's right. Those brands burned into the hide of the cattle help the ranchers know which ranch each cow belongs to. Some of the brands Brother Brandon mentioned seeing were the Turkey Track, Diamond T, and the Lazy K. And Brother Brandon said the ranch he was working for was the Tripod. Now while it's important that the ranchers know what different brand they have on, was that the most important thing that the rangers were looking for when the cattle was crossing into the forest land to graze? No, the answer is no. What was it that was the important thing that they were looking at? Eliana, the blood tag. That is right. The blood tag proves it is a registered thoroughbred Hereford, that that animal is a pure blood. And that is like the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what God is going to look for at the great gate heaven, right? He's looking for the blood of Jesus Christ. He, doesn't look for different brands that we have, but he's looking for the blood. And that's why it's so important that we apply the token, the blood, to our lives. So let's get our Bibles, and we're going to read one more scripture together. If you want to stand with me, we're going to read Ephesians 1, 7. All right, let's read together. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. All right, you can have a seat. All right, for our last point, we're going to talk about God in nature. Just watch God. He moves. Oh, how wonderful he is. If you'll just open your eyes, you can see him all around you. He's in his universe everywhere, moving. Watch him in the sunset. Watch him in the sunrise. Watch him in the rainbow. Watch him everywhere. You can see him. He's no farther from you than your right arm is. God's in his universe. Now we know from tapes that we can see God in nature. Brother Branham tells us. He tells us about all the different times he's seen God while out hunting, guiding, and ranching. How about you guys? Have you guys seen God in nature? In quiet times, sure. In the sunset? In the, in the woods? In the ocean? Perfect. In the clouds? Sure. In your backyard? How about you out there? I'm sure you've seen God in nature, too. Oh, it's just so godly to be up there. Oh, I, I just, that's, that's my cathedral up there where I talk to him and come down here and talk to you, see. And up in there, oh, it's so wonderful, just relaxing. Just standing there, I thought, oh, God. And look, then the rain come out and the evergreens just froze over and a rainbow swept across that, from a crowd peak, come over to Sheep Mountain, over that way, across that way. And I thought, oh, God, look at there. 
Mm, I thought, there you are, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Here it comes down here, there. You're the same yesterday, today, and for the seven church ages, the seven golden candlestick. There you are. God, how wonderful you are. So we know that Brother Branham seen God in the sun, sunrise, in the rainbow, out in nature. And we, if we just open our eyes, we can see God everywhere too. Now, one of the stories that is one of our favorites in the message, Chatter Chatter, took place in Colorado. And Brother Branham seen God in this. You remember the story? He was out elk hunting and a storm come up and he sheltered behind a tree. And when the storm was over, he seen God everywhere. He heard that elk bugle to his mate. He heard a great wolf howl. He seen a beautiful rainbow come across the canyon. He got so full of the Holy Ghost and so excited, he put his gun down and he started hollering, hallelujah, hallelujah, over and over again until he heard something. He heard a pine squirrel going, chatter, chatter, chatter. I run around a couple of times more, and I noticed a little fella. I thought I'd excite him, but he had his little eye bugged out on his cheek, and he was looking down in that blowdown. And I thought, uh, well, what's down there? And the storm had forced the big eagle down. And that's what he was barking at. It wasn't at me. It was that eagle. So I looked, and this big eagle jumped up. In Colorado, we had the brown eagle. Great, big, beautiful bird, and I love eagles. Because God likens his children, his heritage unto eagle. And God himself calls himself an eagle. He is Jehovah eagle. Papa eagle. We're his little eaglets. What was that pine squirrel barking at? Eliana. A brown eagle. That's right. Now, why did Brother Ben say he loved eagles? How about you at home? Do you know why from the quote? God likened himself to an eagle, and we are his eaglets. Did you know that Brother Branham says that the New and Old Testament, the eagle's wings represent the New and Old Testament? And we're the eaglets hanging on to every word that's in here, right? Yes. There's another story that Brother Branham's seen God in, another eagle story that took place in Colorado. So let's listen close and see how that Brother Branham seen God in this eagle. Very recently, I was up in Colorado, and I was standing up on a mountain, and I was watching an old mother eagle as she brought her little ones from the nest and on her wings and set them down in a grassy pasture. And then she flew back up to the top, very peak of the highest rock she could get to, and she sat down. She began to watch. Well, I was watching through by binoculars. My horse was hitched to a tree, and I was watching. And I said, Lord, I, I like this. And it seemed to me that I said, it smells, if you was ever around the eagle's nest. And they make it out of sharp sticks and things, and that poor little eagles were just walking on those uh, sticks and thorns. They never know nothing else. But one day, the mother spread forth her wings, and they stepped on the wings. And went out now, I looked at those little fellows, and they were just having a, a Pentecostal revival. They were just running around on that soft grass, just kicking here and uh, chirping to one another and jumping over each other, just as free as they could be. I thought, well, that's right. Now there is like a man in the old nest of the world, knows nothing but that what the devil can give him. But one day God picks him up and sets him down in the shady green pasture. Oh, how he rejoices. He's free. There's nothing, no harm. I thought, well, why aren't those little fellows afraid? Wonder if they realize there's coyotes around that would pick them up. But every once in a while, they would look up, and the old mother was sitting up there watching them. I thought, well, praise be to God. That's right. He taken me out of the nest of the world, and he climbed the ramparts of glory, setting on high, watching over his heritage to see that no harm comes. I thought if a coyote would start towards one of those little eagles, she'd flog him to death. I thought, that's right. Let Satan take after a believer, and he's got Jesus Christ on his hands. That's right. Let him take. After a while, she was watching her great 
majestic head looking around. She's on the highest rock that she could find, because she could see everywhere. Her sharp eagle eyes watching. And after a while, I seen her raise her head through my ten power binoculars. I seen her raise her head and look around. She's whipping the air. And I thought, what is it? Way back in the north, a northerner started. The thunder roared. She let out a scream, and down through there she went, throwed forth those big wings right out on that grassy prairie. And every one of those little eagles ran over real quick. They were instructed, perhaps, before leaving the nest. They caught their little feet right in the feathers, throw their little mouth down, little bill hooked it around the feather, and she raised with that bunch of eagles on her wings and went just as straight, piercing that wind, blowing nearly 50 miles an hour then, right into the cleft of the rock. I cried like a baby. I thought, some glorious day, when this revival is over, he'll come from glory, spread forth his great wings of power, and the little eagles will hook their bills into there and fly away into glory with him. Colorado was a very special place to Brother Branham, where he could spend time alone with God. He could see God everywhere that he looked. We're looking forward to the time when Jesus Christ comes for us on those eagle wings to carry us home with him. We're so thankful for this message that we have and that we heard the great eagle cry and we've answered. We're hiding in the safety of the rock, Jesus Christ. And in closing, we're gonna go ahead and sing the song Exodus 19, four. So go ahead and stand. God bless you all. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians And how I bear you on eagles' wings And brought you unto, unto myself Exodus 9